Interracial couples of Reddit, what was the biggest difference you had to get used to? Before we start with the first story, please hit subscribe and ring the notification bell to stay updated with us. Story 1. An ex was Latina, and while there really weren't any social things that were new getting used to her family dynamic, took some adjusting because they were very close and involved in each other's lives so. It was normal for the weekend's inevitable BBQ to be something I was expected to be present for if she was going, cause otherwise 16 plus people would grill her about me not coming. Story 2. I'm a white dude married to a black woman. I had no idea about the whole culture of hair upkeep for black women. How much it costs, how much time it takes, how much it's a connection point for her and other women. Interestingly, what was a bigger adjustment had nothing to do with race. I'm an only child, and she is one of five so obviously the family dynamics are quite different. Next month we will be married for 24 years so I guess it's all good. Story 3. I am white. My estranged family still implies that my Filipino husband is a scammer and is only with me for the money and Canadian citizenship. We have been together for almost 15 years, married for 12. You think that if he was only with me for the Canadian citizenship, he would have left me 10 years ago after he became a Canadian citizen. I don't even make a lot of money. He doesn't even make a lot of money. But we are comfortable and extremely happy. There is a reason why I do not speak to my family anymore. Story 4. Culturally, Asian men do not talk about their problems or stress. It's a sign of masculinity to just quietly bear it all so when things get rough whether inside or outside of the relationship, my husband just becomes really quiet. At first I thought maybe he's just really focused or motivated at the time. He doesn't express anger at all but at the same time he doesn't express anything at all. That's when I know something is up with him. Coming from a half Latino household, we are very loud and expressive especially when we are stressed out, worried or angry. The Asian and Latino cultures are so opposite in so many ways, but yet so alike it's quite a journey being married to an Asian man. I wouldn't have it any other way to be honest. I think bringing cultures together through love is one of life's greatest things to witness and be a part of. Story 5. White male here that dated a black woman for a while in my late teens. Overall it was good for us, her immediate family liked me. It wasn't until I went to get family reunion did it change. We were both made aware it was wrong for us to date even though a couple guys had white GFS and wives, they also got into her little brother's ear. Me and him would play games and all but after that he wouldn't speak a word to me. Her parents caught a ton of crap also for allowing me to date her. Her parents apologized, it wasn't their fault but they were super hurt and embarrassed. We didn't break up because of that but it did affect our relationship after. Story 6. My partner is from California, I'm from Singapore. I think the biggest difference is popular culture. Everything from your childhood TV shows, the iconic music of your teens, even your education system is going to be different. You cannot expect your partner to know what Mr. Rogers is at at watched XYZ cartoon. All assumptions have to be thrown out of the window. I think it's a good thing to be honest you start from zero. It makes you completely aware of how vast the world around you is and I keep learning new things every day. Just yesterday I learned that in California, there's a mascot called Smokey Bear that taught kids about forest fires. In turn, I told her about Singa the Courtesy Lion, which is a mascot to teach people courtesy good manners. We had an entire discussion about mascots and teaching populations, and it was so fascinating. This happens so much that sometimes we can't stop talking to each other. Story 7. In my failed marriage there was overt racism. I'm Asian and my ex-husband is Eastern European. When we first started dating his mother declared, there are three races in this world, white, black and yellow and they should not mix. What would the neighbors say? Lo 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 lol. His grandfather expressed surprise when he met me because I'm not black. He thought Japan was in Africa. Japanese families are generally pretty respectful about not being too intrusive. His family was all into everyone's business. They would ask questions like, you've gained weight? What are you eating? And what does your psychiatrist say about how long you should be on antidepressants? This is how they bond. His family felt I was secretive and hated them because I refused to answer these questions. This created a situation where my ex had to choose between his family and me. Guess what his choice was? Story 8. Black woman with a white husband in the UK. I think the biggest difference was how family are treated. In my culture I cannot fathom leaving an elderly family member to live alone and fend for themselves but that seems pretty normal for my husband's family. 
We talk about it a lot and he agrees it may seem weird but is expected. Also bonus of money, I am of the mindset that if you give someone money you really don't ask for it back unless it was pre-agreed. As in, if I can afford to buy you something I don't expect something in return. It seems in English culture everyone must pay each other back to the penny and not allow anyone to pay for anything. That's a real culture shock to me. Story 9. My hubs is black. I'm white. He was shocked at how my long hair found its way everywhere. All over the shower. Check. Randomly around the house. Check. In the crack of his ass. Check. He was less than impressed on the last one. With me? That I couldn't run my fingers through his hair any old direction without f***ing up his waves. I didn't know it had to be a certain way and he didn't tell me. He said he liked me rubbing his head too much to tell me I was messing them up. It wasn't until he was rocking a slight fro and I asked where those pretty lines in his hair went. And he glared at me and was like, you. He wasn't mad at me, he genuinely thought I knew and had just wanted to rub his head that badly. I was so clueless, I didn't even know they were called waves. Story 10. My boyfriend is Guatemalan, I didn't know how deeply Catholic Guatemalans are. I went no contact with his family for over a year because of the way they treated me. His mother called me damaged goods because I wasn't a virgin which was deeply triggering because I'm a survivor. People have a distrust of me because I'm not from their social circle. They also really hate gay people and one day I went off on his cousin. Apparently being an outspoken woman is also very frowned upon. Basically I don't speak Spanish, I'm learning. I am not wealthy they are and my family isn't good enough. It's probably just them though. Story 11. I was born and raised in the Netherlands. I'm half Italian, half Indonesian, but did not grow up with those cultures at home except a little. My girlfriend is Persian. In the Netherlands, or at least in my experience, when people say no to something, then they mean no. While apparently for Persians it's seen as polite to decline at least the first offer. Often also the second, even if you actually really want. So for example, if she would offer me a cookie and I'd say no, she would ask another three times before letting it go, which was cute but also annoying. Meanwhile, when I offer her a cookie and she says no, I just quit asking and then she gets a little mad that I didn't ask her a couple of times more. It's not like the biggest difference or anything but it's a cute, and in the beginning, a very confusing difference at it. Wow. Did not expect 14k upvotes for this comment, and I really love to learn so much about these kind of customs, and that they are more widespread than I thought it would be. Especially in Europe I did not expect it was common in Ireland, Finland and Austria. Thanks for all the upvotes and interesting tidbits of culture that you've shared with me. Also for those wondering, I know my girlfriend by now, the other way around. So yes, sometimes the Taroff happens and I'm prepared for that. And meanwhile, my girlfriend knows I'm not that familiar with Taroff so there's never much confusion between us. We value good communication, have a great day you guys. Story 12. My wife's family was always slightly racist, always gave her advice to pursue all her options regularly. The kicker was when I tried to marry her after six years together. We had a full-blown intervention at what was expected to be the lunch of us telling them. Parents. Sister the whole spang. They blindsided both me and wife and insulted me to my face and said they wouldn't support the wedding. Told her we were being ridiculous as I sat there. My wife sat there silently while they grilled me. I've never felt so hurt and vulnerable in my life. I could barely open my mouth to defend myself. I felt so small. We're still together and I love her, but I feel I lost a part of my self-respect and feeling of safety that day. She lasted a whole one month no contact with them, but they seem to have learned a bit from the shock. Emphasis on a bit, they still haven't apologized to me. Anyways, thanks for the read stranger edit, since people keep asking and I've posted this elsewhere. Her family are white living somewhere in North America, my parents are brown immigrants here from Asia. Her parents are atheists, she is an atheist. My parents are Muslim, I'm an atheist. I was born here in the same city as her. We've known each other since age 13, going two decades now. Story 13. I've been really lucky to live in several countries and therefore I've been in relationships with people from diverse backgrounds. I'm American born, mixed race myself. I'm much older than the average Redditor. A few interesting notes. I dated two Koreans in Korea sex is less taboo overall than the US, if you're a normal and respectful person. Way too many people trying to fulfill some weird Asian fetish out there. Yet, women have this pressure to act cute and it's so over the top and dramatic. It's like trying to imitate a TV drama. I've dated several Germans. Pros, way fewer pleasantries, 
Way more just saying what is meant. Cons. Way fewer pleasantries. Way more just saying what is meant. I've dated two African Americans. They both had huge energy. And then I net family and everyone brings huge energy. Then I met friends and everyone is raising the energy bar. Exhausting ha ha ha. I have lived quite a unique life and it was boring compared to the normal everyday life in this context. Dated one Irish girl in Ireland. She was probably the funniest person I've ever met. Tight knit family. Kinda stereotypical Christian values while not being Christian at all. She was a picky eater. She was from North Dublin and constantly threatened to have me That was interesting. Dated a few Aussies, specifically Melbourne, which I'm told were different from the rest of Australia, because I lived there for years. A girl that waits half as much as me, drinks twice as much as me, wakes up the next day at 8 a.m. and plays footy, and comes home and calls the gals over to start drinking again. Continues to make out with more girls than I could ever in my life. Then somehow still wants to go home with me knowing full well I'm only there temporarily. So yeah, I'm a bit drunk sitting in a bar in Malta now and reminiscing on the amazing partners I've had in life. I am finally working on myself and hope to make one a bit more permanent someday. Thanks for reading, Random Stranger. Story 14th, the big one, the extent to which casual racism and prejudice is still present that I as a white man was completely oblivious to, both directed at minorities. Everything from taking longer to get served at the bar to direct unambiguous hate and within minority communities, refusing to hire certain other minorities, preferential treatment for lighter skin tones, etc. Some other observations. If we go away anywhere for any length of time, there is a ridiculously long list of family friends we need to buy gifts for. We go to visit anyone no matter how frequently need to take a gift. It's now a budgeted line item. Really. My value as a man is at a first order a function of my career and only my career. Doctor, lawyer, engineer, anything else, in that order. It's how I'll be introduced. This is Kukuza, he's an engineer. And then I'm accepted as having certain social standing by default. Big extended community parties. Awesome. The men drinking whiskey whilst the women clean up afterwards somewhat problematic. Story 15. I've been in a few multiracial relationships. Currently married to my Laotian wife of 10 years with a 6-month-old baby. And since I only have a moment to comment, I'll focus on this aspect. I'm a southern white guy with a southern accent. And I'm older now, just over 50. 80% of the world expects me to be of a certain mindset, political affiliation, and racist attitude. My family has some racists for sure. And living half my life in Atlanta, they expect me to be too city to know how to do things like shuck oysters or work on cars and home projects. And half my life living on the farm in South Georgia, they don't expect me to be DJing a rave event with 10,000 people in attendance. Now I've traded in the rockstar life for family life and professional BBQ, which lends itself to even more preconceived notions about the type of person I am. So, a lot of my life has been spent over people's misconceptions and surprising folks. My career is in DevOps engineering, microservices, and financial technology. I'm an award-winning BBQ chef. 40 plus year musician and record and event producer. Yes, I'm Southern, but f your racism and hate. I've seen enough in my life to know how dumb people are that give a shit about who and how you love. All right, folks, that's a wrap. If you like more of this, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also share your thoughts in the comment below. I'll see you in the next video.